share information with locals on issues related to the spread of TB, as well as its control and treatment method in a bid to mitigate an increase of the disease. For GRTS News, I am the Madam. You can also follow that story and other GRTS programs live on our website at www.grts.gm. There you can also monitor GRTS Radio Live. We'll take our first break. Stay tuned. story of a land where communication has been our song, our drumbeat. This is who we are. We dream of a better future, one that is upon us now. We are close to the heart of the world. We are as old as time. The soul of man began with us. We are Africa. Welcome back. While U.S. President Barack Obama pressed for a Trans-Pacific Free Trade Agreement at the Economic Conference of Asian Pacific Nations in Hawaii, a high-profile Republican presidential candidate blasted U.S. aid to China. Mitt Romney argued that with a $189.3 billion trade deficit with China, the United States should cut foreign assistance to Beijing and ask the emerging power to give instead. CNN's Jill Dorothy reports. Mad. This calls me. We give ten million dollars in foreign aid a year to China. <laughs> it's not that he doesn't like the Chinese. It's not that they're bad people, but the idea that a nation that, that, it, that is uh, as, as large and robust and economically viable as theirs is getting money from us just makes no sense at all. I, I would stop spending sending foreign aid to countries that can take care of themselves. Is Romney right? The U.S., with a $189.3 billion trade deficit with China, is giving foreign aid to Beijing? Yes, but... It doesn't go to the government. It goes China to... expert Douglas Paul has served with the State Department, the CIA, and the National Security Council. It goes for local organizations to try to uh, do some of the things that people in America would like our Congress to support. Things like fighting the spread of infectious diseases, law enforcement, fighting narcotics, environmental cooperation, and programs in Tibet where some want independence from Beijing. Would saving $10 million help pay down the U.S. budget deficit now at $15 trillion? Hardly. And Romney admits it. It's not very much money, but just the idea. Two years ago, the State Department says the U.S. gave China more than $27 million. Now, state is requesting less than half that, as China transitions from aid recipient to aid donor. Mitt Romney thinks that's a great idea. It doesn't make a lot of sense for us to borrow money from the Chinese to go give to another country for humanitarian aid. We ought to get the Chinese to take care of the people. But is it? China tends to... Uh, benefit its own contractors with its assistance. It does deals where they provide infrastructure, construction, and exchange for commodities. And these are non-market transactions, often not transparent transactions. And this is not the sort of thing, I hope this is not the sort of thing that Governor Romney had in mind. Chinese aid often has political strings attached. And letting the U.S. simply stand back and allow China to project its power around the world could backfire for Washington. In light of the ongoing crackdown on civilians, the Arab League have announced the suspension of the membership of Syria. The regional body has also called for sanctions against the regime of President al-Assad. The announcement came in an emergency meeting of the League at its headquarters in Cairo. Following weeks of deadly violence in the Syrian capital of Homs, media reports say at least 125 people were killed in the past few days. CNN's Ben Wiedemann has more on that story. It certainly is, if you look back over the history of the body going back to 1945, one of its strongest uh, decisions, certainly suspending Syria uh, from the Arab League is almost, but not completely, unprecedented. That suspension will go into effect on the 16th of November or until Syria implements this uh, Arab action plan. Now, the problem, of course, is that the Arab League doesn't really have much in the way uh, to compete 
compel Syria uh, to live up to its commitment to this action plan, although we did see, hear the uh, Qatari foreign minister say uh, that there would be if Syria didn't live up to its commitments. This is what he said. If they do not abide by the decision of the League and abide by the agreement of the League and stop the killing and allow media in and release political prisoners, this will complicate matters and we do not wish or hope for this. But of course Syria is clearly going to be very hesitant to release the tens of thousands of prisoners it's detained since the beginning of this uprising eight months ago. And as one a member of the opposition told me, if the Syrian army pulls its forces off the streets of Syrian towns and cities, they believe that hundreds of thousands of people will come out and it could very well lead to the fall of the regime of Bashar al-Assad. Jonathan? Ben Wiedemann, live. Take a second break, but stay tuned. Insurance <laughs> Gambia National Insurance Company. Set Insurance. Welcome back. It's now time for the weather report from the Central Forecast Office. The Gambia is endowed with a wonderful landscape full of baobab trees. Like its Cape Point in Bacau, it is one of the most exotic sceneries in the world. The baobab tree is a symbol of resilience, wisdom, and resourcefulness. For the baobab tree provides good food in times of hunger, rents its back for medications, and its sap for glue. In the Gambia, there is a company like the baobab tree, 100% African and purely Gambian in all aspects, in know-how, design, value, capital, and management. That company is Elton. Elton, employing hundreds of Gambians and proudly associating itself with development in the Gambia. Elton, side by side with the Gambia. The chairman of the Independent Electoral Commission, Al Haji Mustafa El Karyol, has promised a free and fair presidential election. Dozens of Alajis and Ajaratus have jetted into Banjul after fulfilling Islam's fifth pillar, 
the Hajj. Report